Well, good morning, everybody. We are on our third day kayaking around on the Mississippi. And looks like uh, it could be another windy day. Last night, we about halfway through the day, we got windbound because uh, we came around that point and the winds were just blowing and uh, whipping up the waves here on Pepin. So we ended up coming off the lake for the night and just uh, took the rest of the day off. And now we wake up today and it is just as or more windy. And so there really isn't much of a break in the forecast for today. They say later in the day, the winds might ease up a little bit, but then the chance of storms goes up. So, but uh, yeah, it might be another day to just kind of wait. And those kinds of days get frustrating. Not much you can do. Uh, it's not even 6.30 in the morning, we're already at this this much of wind, so. If we could get to that shoreline, I don't know, that's, a, that's quite a way, that's quite a few miles there. Um, it might break the wind, but I don't know, that'd be a lot of work to get to that. But, uh, yeah, Let's see how it goes. Alright, we are finally on our way. We are going to try to get this lake done. There's a unexpected break in the wind, so we broke down camp. And we're going to try to get across Pepin today. We'll see what happens. Um, this, uh, this little break in the wind was kind of not planned, so I'm not sure how long it's going to last or what it's going to look like around this point. Feeling the breeze. But that's river life. Pepin makes a decision when you cross, not you. We stop at the point after Lake City on the Minnesota side for one last stretch before heading out into Pepin. Our goal is to finish the lake today. You doubled your water supply. You did. As we begin to near the far shore, the wind picks up and it really blows hard in between the bluffs. As we paddle towards the end, the winds change from broadside to a tailwind. Pepin almost seems to be blowing us right off the lake and back onto the river. What's going on everybody? This might be a bad shot, some condensate on my lens there, but we are nearing, once again, the end of Lake Pepin. It's very exciting. This will be my second time crossing this big old body of water, and it feels good. We now have a tailwind pushing us right out to the river. It's been a grinder, but we're almost there. Still got everybody with us. So it's good. Get back on the river. Wow. But sure, it's right around the corner. It's where we came from. Can't even hardly see it back there, probably. What do you think, Mike? How was your first time on Pepin? Can't wait to do it again? As the heat and humidity began to increase, I couldn't help but take a dip in the unusually clear river. Mm -hmm. 
And we have made it to Wabasha. Got it. Anyway, here's an animal sensor. Looking just as good as it always does. Cool to see it again. Cool to have paddled here once again. And we are on our way to Dock 4. Not too far. Got a barge coming behind us. First one we've seen in quite a while, actually, so that's pretty exciting. I uh, enjoy seeing them out here, so. Storms begin building north and south of our location. We can hear the rumbling thunder off in the distance. We learn that there is going to be a considerable wait at Lock 4 due to several barges in line to lock through. We begin looking up and down the shoreline for a place to camp. My wife calls and asks why I am playing around in the river. She informs me that she was just hit by some storms creating some pretty sizable hail. We finally find a place we like. I decide to hang just off the river. I am treated to great views of the area as well as all the activity taking place on the river. Turns out the storms that hit home are now aiming right at our campsite. I take care of dinner and some nightly chores before the storms arrive. I jump in the hammock just as all the lightning begins. you pay for riverfront property. Several rounds of storms form. It becomes one after the other.
Perhaps not the safest spot, but it sure was a great view. Good morning, everybody. It is day four out here on our little mini Mississippi trip. It was a rough night for me. We had some uh, pretty nasty storms rolling through and um, I uh, couldn't really get out of the tent to put the mat and everything in there correctly. So I did it all, or sorry, in the hammock. So I did it all in the hammock and um, yeah, I uh, ended up tearing the hammock at about 11 o'clock at night, and then at about midnight, after about an hour, half hour, I guess, of trying to tape it shut, um, I finally just decided to crawl out of the hammock and walk back to the beach where the guys were and threw up my tent and got back to bed finally about probably one, I guess. It's 6.16 now, so... It was not the best night's sleep, and I don't sleep good in my tent. Um, it's probably the mat more than anything, but still, that damn, damn mat just keeps me up all night. It's unfortunate. It was a cool night. Uh, it would have been a perfect night in the hammock. But, uh, yeah, the, the bug net tore from the nylon. And the second that happened, man, the mosquitoes, it was like a dinner bell. They just came, came blasting in the hole. I uh, got the tape on there, killed the mosquitoes, but the tape won't stick to the nylon, so it's just uh, every time I'd roll over, the blanket would catch the tape, it'd rip it off. So it was just uh, not a good deal. Snug pack, you're letting me down. I've always talked about how much I like your products and how good they are, but this is the second snug pack jungle hammock that has failed me in the middle of the night on the river so anyway nice morning barge no matter how tired and cranky i am i still like my barges There is a pretty neat fog rolling in between the bluffs and onto the river just before Alma. Pretty neat sight. Good morning, Lock and Dam 4. How do you read? Let's lock for back. I got three kayaks uh, looking to head southbound. I see you got a tow in there. We're holding about a thousand feet up river. Roger, if you can get down there and get on the upper world, just get a signal. We'll take you down before the next one coming up.
wife will love that. Your name is what? John. John? It's good talking to you. We arrive at lock 5 and have to wait, but before long, we are on our way. It's always cool to have those doors open and see what the next part of the river looks like. All right, so this is a video I have been meaning to make for quite a while. I am in the town of Winona right now and I need to thank Winona Canoe slash Current Designs for them helping me out with my Solstice GTS. The Mare had some scratches, dings, and cracks after the river trip in 2019, and they were kind enough to actually resurface the bottom of the boat for me and actually let me watch. So I actually got to uh, learn how the process is done too, which was really cool. So they also helped Mike out, who's on this trip with us now, and got him a spray skirt. Uh, for his boat and they're actually trying to help out some paddlers that are on the upper river as well to get a rudder for their boat and so uh, they have been always just an amazing company to work with i love my current designs boat so this is not a paid advertisement it's just simply the truth no one pays me to say anything so just uh yeah just a huge shout out i figured that uh you know with winona here uh, we're here at Winona. Now was the time to remember to shoot that video. So thanks guys. I do really appreciate all of your support. All right, all right. So the decision was made that Dan will go off on his own and finish his journey. And uh, we're going to get picked up. We're going to call this one a wrap. Ladies and gentlemen, I have enjoyed deeply my journey down the river. Didn't go quite to Iowa or in Winona, but I still had a great time. I have successfully paddled across Lake Pepin two times, and that in itself is a huge accomplishment. So, that will pretty much wrap up this trip. As usual, we'll run the film. And uh, yeah, we'll catch you on the next one. Y'all take care.